and Thelma Todd is found in her Lincoln Phaeton by her assistant Mae Whitehead, apparently dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. She'd work with the best. An entrepreneur, she owned a thriving cafe. Now the ice cream blonde's luminous life was ended in its prime at a tender 29. She was last seen Saturday, December 14th at a party thrown in her honor by Stanley and Ida Lupino at the Cafe Trocadero. Before leaving, Thelma asked Sid Grauman to call her business partner, Roland West, and tell him she'd be home before 2 a.m. But Thelma wasn't seen again until Monday morning when May found her. From Giddy Up, LAPD ruled it suicide. The badges claim Thelma reached her car to keep warm by climbing 277 steps in the dead of a cold, windy December night without scuffing her satin sandals, creasing her shimmering blue gown, or mussing a lock on her perfectly coiffed head. Carrots and peas were found in poor Thelma's stomach. Only Cafe Trocadero didn't serve them. Blood was around her mouth. Her nose was broken, neck bruised, two ribs fractured, and who offs themselves with a trunk stuffed full of Christmas gifts for family and friends as Todd's Phaeton had been? It didn't square. She lived atop her cafe in a duplex with her business partner and former lover, film director Roland West, and a third resident, West's wife, actress Jewel Carmen who claimed not only was she hep to Thelma and Hubby, she was copacetic with it. I wasn't so sure. Turns out the cafe was hemorrhaging cabbage, causing a cat fight. Jewel had threatened to kill Thelma for blowing the hard-earned clams she had invested. But based on what I'd seen, my money was on Roland. Oh, he'd crocodiled it up at the crime scene. West had directed Thelma in her first serious role, a picture called Corsair. Acting under the name Allison Lloyd, she was well-received, fueling her career. By contrast, West's prospects sputtered and there was scuttlebutt Luciana wanted to turn the upstairs duplex into an illegal casino. West loved the scheme. Thelma vehemently opposed it. Was that reason enough to lay his ex low? I wasn't sure, but I knew one thing. I was going to crack this case if it was the last thing I did. Because I'm Nick Noir, the time-traveling private dick. I swing stick, crack it quick, four minutes or less, mostly, which means that's it for this episode. Be sure to tune in on August 11th for part two when I confront the heavy hitters and discover who done it. Until then, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, tell friends, ripple your tipple, and above all, stay safe out there.